converter and some liquid laundry soap I had to soak it in a big garbage can like that I did it for two days I thought to give it some extra cleaning um, it didn't I, don't, I hope it works because it didn't seem like it cleaned all that well because there's still some soot on the inside of the exhaust pipe and down here so like that um, and I mean it didn't it doesn't really look the honeycomb inside didn't really look all that it didn't look dirty at all to begin with um, this is off of uh, T100 it's a check engine code that's been plaguing me for close to a year um, this is kind of <laughs> Uh, this is supposed to be the best option to go soak it in laundry soap. Um, took off the O2 sensor, of course, before you soak it in water. Um, just letting it dry out right now before I install it back onto the truck. Okay, this is underneath the truck. This is where one side of the catalytic converter bolts to. I, you know, covered it up because it's a few days outside here, so that way nothing gets inside there. No animals or junk. And when you, whenever you remove the exhaust pipe, um, I'm gonna put new uh, catalytic converter gasket. And on the one right here. And Cala converter uh, bolts that support right here. I just took it off, and the other side bolts right here. Uh, and you'll use another gasket right there. That's the upstream converter, which is relatively new. And this is where the downstream converter connects to. So, I'll go ahead and try to bolt this, get my finger out of the way, this uh, sucker in. I have a little jack stand holding up this exhaust pipe here. Doesn't doesn't really need it, but kind of keeping the, the stress off it, off it, because all that's holding it up is a little rubber insulators right there. Okay. Okay, I got the cat back in. Uh, that's the back portion of the joint. That's the downstream O2 sensor. And there's the cat. And there's the joint right there. And that's the upstream O2 sensor before the cat. And basically the O2 sensors monitor the performance of the catalytic converter. So the first thing I did, as some people said it was, you know, the downstream uh, O2 sensor. I figured, you know, it's worth to try to at least try it. Um, this is a universal Bosch. Some people say it's they're not good. Um, I hope I hope they are because I don't want to buy another one. Um, it seems like I mean it seems like they're they're good. I mean it's made in USA and there's a few options. What they say on this uh, code, the P0420. Um, it changed. I thought it was. They said it could be exhaust leaks. I had some exhaust leaks. Uh, it's hard to see. Um, this is the, the exhaust pipe where it meets the exhaust manifold, and in between there's two like donut gaskets. And I had a, I did a exhaust leak test. I put some you know soap on the joint and blew a shop vac blowing towards the engine. Um, which I don't know how good that is, but I don't think it was that bad to do. And I got bubbles and got bubbles there, and 
so I thought it might be exhaust leak, so I just got done, I changed the uh, donut gaskets, and that, that didn't work either, so I think if you get this code, most likely it's, uh, it's probably something to do with the Cadillac converter giving out the help. This isn't, I hope this fixes it, um, let you know this video, because um, a new Toyota Cadillac converter, which, you know, is the best route to go, costs 1500 bucks, and that's way too much money, and I hear, I hear a lot of bad things about the aftermarket ones, how they don't work, but it, it wasn't too, on this truck, it's not too hard to work on to take this out at least, so I figure this is the best route to go and safest. Okay, I finally check, uh, fixed this check engine light uh, problem P0420. Uh, what I ended up doing was replacing uh, the O2 sensor again with uh, the OEM brand uh, Denso uh, oxygen sensor. And this is for the downstream part number right there, 234-4161. Uh, got, got it on Amazon for around $50. Um, this is the, basically the, what Toyota uses for a lot of their parts is Denso, so it's basically OEM. Um, was, uh, replaced, one of the first things I did when I got this check engine light code problem was replace the O2 sensor, but this is the Bosch Universal one. Um, there's a little splice connector there, then you use the old connector out the old oxygen sensor. Um, but... This didn't end up working out for me. This could go upstream or downstream. It's universal. Um, I tried was just trying to save a few bucks, but uh, that uh, didn't really work out. Um, so what you should do when you shouldn't cheap out on you know critical components like this. It just ends up costing you more. It really wasn't that much. Uh, it's almost the same price as the Bosch show. Uh, just go OEM on certain. You could cheap out on cer certain parts, but uh, obviously this is not one of them you could cheap out on. <clears throat> um, so I, I am just showing you. I have zero. It's hard to see there. I have zero codes. Got the green light right there. It's been off for a long time and passed the uh, smog test. No problem. <clears throat> Um, and then, uh, let's see, you know, this is a good, this is a good, um, code reader, but what it would, what would be good is one that shows live data with, you know, the car running, you can actually see if the O2 sensors are working right, uh, this one doesn't do that, but I knew what I was getting when I, when I bought this. It does, you know, it does a, it does a good job for the price, um, I bought this on Amazon too for 50 bucks. Uh, as well, and uh, what I so I guess what I did was change <laughs> going steps, change the oxygen sensor with this Bosch, and soaked the that didn't work. Soaked it in uh, the, took out the Cadillac converters, soaked it in soapy, soapy water for a couple days, and that didn't work. So I added <coughs> the some lacquer thinner to the to the gas, um, it's in reference to, uh, Scotty Kilmer's video, um, that ended up working for me, so I finally ended up emailing him and, uh, asking him, you know, my, telling him my situation, and he recommended that put a OEM one, uh, he said Toyotas don't like universal parts, they're pretty picky that way, so I did that, and that, uh, fixed it for me, and I'm gonna put a link to his channel and his, uh, video, uh, I owe him props for helping me out there, um, I would recommend subscribing to his channel, he has a lot of good videos, uh, it's really, um, which tells you how it, how it really is as far as fixing cars, <clears throat> so let me show you where the, the new one, there's the car, uh, let's see. There it is. 
right there. And uh, this screws on. I think there are eight or ten mil to uh, bolts to hold it on, and you put it the gasket and unclip the connector, the electrical connector, put put it on, and you're all set. So that is my story. This is, I guess, kind of more related to, I guess, Toyotas, but possibly this could information could uh, go to other cars as well. Um, this, so hope this video helps you guys. And probably the best thing was just to uh, replace when you learn from my mistake. First thing you should do is probably just uh, replace the uh, O2 sensor with the uh, OEM brand, such as Denso. So learn from my mistakes. Um, but I did wind up finally uh, fixing it, so still save money. Um, so I hope this video helps uh, you guys. Okay, thanks for watching.